Unspoiled Network podcast. This is Unspoiled, covering Ted Lasso Season 3, Episode 9. La Locker Room Ox Foles. <laughs> In this episode... <laughs> Why? <laughs> I literally couldn't even begin to guess how that is pronounced. A full? Like, is that how you say it? Every time that you say it, you see something in French, you just have to delete like two thirds of the consonants and then say it. Mm hmm. So, uh, yeah, sure. Uh, that, well, let's try it again. Le locker room au full. <laughs> also, deeply incorrect, I'm sure. In this episode, well, we have to deal with Isaac. It's going to say Colin. No, we got to deal with that. <laughs> Welcome to Unspoiled. Welcome to the show, everyone. I am Natasha. I'm Rashawn. Uh, so, okay, you guys, this episode, I was like really chagrined because I don't think Rashawn and I talked about Colin getting caught by Isaac at all last episode. We didn't. That's why and I like, was so fucked up at the beginning of this episode. I was like, wait, did we not talk about that? How do we not talk we about that? We didn't. And I remember while we were like having a conversation about something else in the recording i saw that scene on the screen while i was like talking about another point and i was like oh mm -hmm. my god yeah we gotta double back and talk about that never did and i knew as we were finishing i was like i feel like we forgot something and i can't think what it is but yeah that was it because it's a really kind of brief moment um, right that happens as a result of the order that Isaac gives everybody to delete all of the naked pics and stuff that they have been sent by people in order mm -hmm. to ensure they don't get hacked and wind up being the reason somebody else gets like completely humiliated. Right. And he follows Colin out thinking that Colin is attempting to dodge the order mm -hmm. and kind of gets in his face about it because Colin's being a bit evasive right and he winds up just snatching the phone out of his hand mm -hmm. and this is literally like the only context where i can be like okay with somebody snatching a phone out of somebody else's hand because that's just a, just a no-no just don't do it right but then he sees that the videos and pics that he's got are of dudes i'm assuming we don't see but right and he gives him this look and walks <sighs> away and like you know i'm sure that there were folks out there who thought maybe his reaction was because he's homophobic, but for me, it really looked hurt. Like it, it seemed right away to me like, Oh, he's upset that he didn't know. And that Colin never told him mm. and it lines up with, you know, the rest of his behavior in this, he's just so personally hurt. Yeah. And I was like, kind of surprised by how personally he takes it. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know if we're going to find out something else that's going on with him that's going to tie into this or what, but he really seemed so, uh, like it was, it was like he and Colin had a relationship and he caught Colin cheating kind of thing, you know? Yeah. I, I think that, uh, it's easy to forget because the show leaned really heavily at the beginning of the series especially in season one how close colin and isaac have been since the start of the show mm. right so at the very very beginning we meet colin and isaac together as like tweedle dumb and tweedle dumber or whatever you know <laughs> the two birds I that's right because jamie it. six them on exactly Nate, right? they right. exactly okay. they have always been like a duo you know mm -hmm. 
And uh, and then the show kind of progressed and moved on, and Jamie's character grew, and they didn't really need to have them like that. But mm-hmm. we've always been meant to understand just how close these two men are, and how, you know what good good friends they are. Okay. And so, yeah, I've definitely lost track of that. So yeah, but once you think of that, and then it's just sort of, and then I just, I, then that's what I was when you said, "What am I doing on your phone?" I was checking. Because I was like, we didn't talk about this last week. And I didn't have the show up last week when we were recording. Right, because you were having issues with that. Yeah. So um, I'm, I have it up tonight just so I can make sure, like, we can both be making sure we don't miss anything. But so, yeah, so when this episode's open, I was like, fuck, Isaac knows. Fuck, we didn't talk about that. Mm-hmm. Wait, did I miss it? Did Maybe it didn't happen. Like, and I got really turned around, <laughs> but, but then you were like right on it. So it's like when you started watching Daredevil with the last episode, my God, you guys, I don't want to take up <laughs> too much time because we have a lot to talk about, but yeah, that was a thing that I did. <sighs> we all it. do. We all have our moments of this. It happens, man. You know, I, and it was I like, told you I skipped a whole episode of Jane, the Virgin and straight up didn't notice for five episodes in a row. <laughs> Somebody was like, remember that thing? And I was like, remember what? No. And then I was like on episode 20 and I had skipped 17 or 16, like way back. (laughs) I mean, a lot of things make more sense though. I will say that. Oh God. (laughs) This life is hard, y'all. It's true. (sighs) All right. Um, But so, so yeah, so this, so this episode opens piggybacking on what you just mentioned and we see all this like weird tension between Mm -hmm. Colin and Isaac even though the team as a whole is really gelling and they're having this practice and and they're just on fire and everybody's happy and so it's really striking to see how cold Isaac is being yeah because everybody is just like you know having the best time it's like this wonderful music playing and they're all just like (laughs) grinning ear to ear it's fantastic yeah, everybody is, uh, there's a real atmosphere of, like, we're playing, you mm-hmm. know? Not just, mm-hmm. like, we're playing a sport, it's, but, like, we're out on the... Play, it's on the, playful. Yeah, we're out on the playground kind of thing. Mm. It's really nice, you know? It's yeah. the sort of thing that is uh, what you want when you see that people are paid to play sports. It's like, I wish it was more of this, you know? Yeah, yeah. More of, like, the feeling of being little kids... Yeah. Um, like, like even and, Roy has to say, like, what a good job they're all doing. It like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. kills him to have to say it, you know, <laughs> and give and give uh, Ted his like his props for for the you know switch switching the strategy. I guess yes. midway through the season, uh, I love how painful it is for Roy to to give that amount of like credit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and eventually, at the end, he does the whistle whistle and he says great job guys and ted just kind of has to hey did you hear roy said you did a great job guys and beard faints he pretends just faints. Faints. <laughs> it's great it's beautiful I, he just tosses I, up his, his I, clipboard and falls i love the commitment too he just goes straight back <laughs> yep. uh the moment between Isaac and Colin, I wish that people had noticed that more that, you know, his friends on the field, that they were both like, just not, it, it's just such a clear break in the energy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, what can you do? And we have this, Danny, Danny is trying to remember which of his socks are the dirty ones. <laughs> and he sniffs both and can't tell. But then later, Colin sniffs the air when Danny is still right. like fifteen feet away. And you can tell him it was like, is his nose just broken? Is that what it is? Like, how can Colin tell? But Danny is his, his face is touching the fabric, and he can't tell. How? I okay. What does he? What does Danny say when he says something about just because one is dirty, it doesn't mean. 
I would. I had. I yeah, because he theme. he can't remember which is clean and which is dirty. And Sam says, "You bundle your dirty socks. Just because they're dirty doesn't mean they don't deserve to have a friend." That's right. <laughs> that's when Colin says, "Oh, that's of course. That's why we're all friends with Richard." And Richard does a <laughs> sort of like <laughs> exaggerated laugh. Richard takes like a couple of shots this episode. Actually, he's always catching strays. That's true. Like, I, and I think, I think it's leaning into this 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 trope of how like nobody likes the French, you know, that just permeates our entire world. On you know, it's true. <laughs> Even though they apologies all, like, to seem, the French, but you know what you, you know. Did. Yeah, what, what did they do, <laughs> ma'am? I'm not getting into all that, but it's substantial, and I'm. I just mean, gonna... is it more substantial than what the British did? Like, no, and we don't have. But the British are our grandparents, oh, so we I as see. Americans are a lot more lenient about that. I it's see. Like I see what's when happening. You there. have a racist neighbor versus a racist grandpa. Uh... You're gonna roll with the neighbor a lot less. You know, I see like, what you're saying here. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> um, so the the vibe out here is good, except for these two. Colin tries to get Isaac to go with him for a beer later, and Isaac won't. Literally just walks away. Yeah. And I was really upset by that. Like, he tried to connect. He's trying to, you know, and Isaac is not interested. And I felt really sad over it. I wanted him to to hear his friend out. And he's just too hurt, you know? Yeah. yeah. Bummer. He's shutting it down. Shutting it mm-hmm. down. Um, and, and I love, this is not, like, I don't love it. But I thought that the actor did a really good job with this. Because... Uh, the hurt on Colin's face when he's rejected and like the mm-hmm. fear uh, because Colin doesn't know for certain what the rejection is about. So the yeah. assumption is that, okay, well, I'm being rejected because he knows I'm I'm queer. He knows I'm gay. And now he doesn't like me anymore, you know. Uh, and it really does, I think the actor does a really good job of conveying that without it, like, I don't want to say over the top because I don't want to suggest that that emotion would be unacceptable if it were over the top. But mm-hmm. considering their surroundings, he cannot really go into a super emotional thing, right? Yeah. Because he's not yeah. out yet and he would have to explain. So he's got to. So I thought he just did a really good job of just sort of like the the sort of puzzled and, and, and like hurt, like just, you know, but also having to be like, all right, but this isn't the place where I can, like, I can't just, you know, go into a fit about it. I have to act like it's no big deal while I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's a pretty step up for, for this actor who has mostly been, you know, like a B character. You know what I mean? Hasn't There's had a to sort do, of vibe like, at the end because Roy says something about how he thinks we've been underusing him. And I felt like that was the, uh, yeah, the, the right? writers or the director just kind of being like, yeah, uh, we're seeing it now. And it's last <laughs> season. Oops. I like that read. That's where I didn't think of it, even think of it that way. That's fun. I like that. Um, so we go to Rebecca and Keely who are having a little lunch together and talking about Jack. And yeah. we find out that Keeley has been incessantly texting Jack and that Diarrhea we haven't gotten the a single respo- response. Yes. <laughs> I really, really want to like, I, she, she, I paused it on the screen. I'm screenshotting the, uh, oh, that's right. I forgot that Apple won't let you screenshot. So that just came up as a black rectangle. Fuck. I really want Are you to trying see if to there's see? a way to read it. Yeah. Oh, I'm the people who are hardcore into the show are really, really good about shit like that. So if you okay. Googled Keely's text to Jack, you might be able to just find it on your phone. I'm afraid <laughs> to Google anything because it may bring up another spoiler. That's you know? true. Um All right, let me. But I've gotta confess, I was so disappointed here that after what 
Jack said to Keely and how she acted that Keely is like chasing her. Uh, tell me what, eh, okay. Tell me what? a little bit more about that. Tell me more about that. I don't know how to spell Keely. Anybody? Um, K E E L E Y. L E Y. Thank you. Yeah, I believe. But I don't want to tell you more about that because you can't fully pay attention right now. You so can I'm tell me for you. <laughs> <laughs> There's just no possible way to fully pay attention to somebody while you're Googling a thing. Trust me. I know. Mm-hmm. All right, go ahead. I'm not Googling, any- Googling anymore. Well, I just feel like Jack acted so poorly and I want Keely to drop her entirely Mm. and see immediately and i know this is unreasonable that she is not the person that i expected every time she told me she i got this babe i thought it was going to be to support me and then it turns out she's ashamed of me and thinks i did the wrong thing and just like wash her hands of it Mm. and instead she's out here sending paragraphs paragraphs and paragraphs i am just really disappointed i was just so hopeful keely would completely be like wow dodged a bullet Mm. and instead it's like she's clinging a lot more than i expected like just just the fact that she texted first at all would have been a bummer to me making it that she texted first and then kept texting and it was all of these paragraphs it was so much worse. Like mm. for me, the 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 fact that she seemed at all open to continuing their relationship was a real shock. I never expected we would start this episode off with her believing there was a possibility of them still being together or wanting that possibility at all. Mm. I thought at the end of the last episode, that was the breakup and that was that. And I felt like it was just, it, it, it just seemed so absolute even though the way it ends is like verbally ambiguous where it's like are you coming back i don't know Mm -hmm. to me somebody reacts that way and then says i don't know if i'm coming back when you are the one who has been violated that's you saying now well then no you're not coming back bye that's Mm -hmm. you know that's the reaction i want Right. And instead, it feels like Keely is like somehow buying into this that she did something wrong, despite saying, I'm not ashamed. I don't regret doing the video. What do you think? What is she going to how what do you think there is left to, to repair here between the two of you when you are coming at this from such completely different perspectives? And one of them is like belittling you and blaming you. Like, it's just so gross. I'm just super disappointed with the direction they took Keely's character this season, to be honest. Yeah. Like, I have to say, I had a, a different a different reaction to uh, what's happening with Keely. Um, I think that what we are seeing, like, I think that there's an idea sometimes that... Uh, Powerful women, women on their way to understanding their own power and all that, um, that it is like a straight line sometimes. And Mm. it often is not. It's a series of taking two steps forward and then stumbling and going backwards and then remembering who you are and then trying to go forward again. So Keely has been taking some shots to that, to the neck this season. In Mm -hmm. different ways. We have the breakup with Roy, which is not what she wanted. You know, he, and it happened in that sort of like, she thought they were going to be taking some time to, to get their careers together, but that they would still be, you know, not final. And he just sort of dumps it on her that they're breaking up in front of Phoebe. Yeah. And then she gets, you know, swept up and swept off her feet by Jack who is love bombing her. Right. And, and Mm -hmm. part of that 
you know, that plays with a person's, it's meant to play with a person's mind and is a type of manipulation in and of itself. Mm -hmm. And so she's on the rebound from this thing that happened with Roy, trying to get her business up. She's having challenges at work. This woman comes in, sweeps her off her feet, makes her feel wonderful, and then, like, turns on a dime as far as we're all concerned, right? She completely Mm -hmm. does a 180 from this person who's claiming to be there to be supportive of Keely when she needs it the most. And then she flips on her. And if you have been with someone who has been showering you with love and attention, and then they withhold that, I think it is a very natural response to grasp back for that because that was making you feel good. That was making you feel safe. And even if it's Mm -hmm. not good for you in reality, I think it's a very natural thing. And I think that it would take some time to recover from what Jack has done to her, which is play really a lot of mind games with Keely when she's already vulnerable. Like, so when she's sitting here with Rebecca and she's had like a little bit of space, it hasn't been that much time, but it's been like a little bit of space and she's able to share with Rebecca, look what the fuck I did. Like she knows that this Mm. is, beneath her you know yeah. she knows it She look what i did and rebecca's like oh my god girl what did you do you know she mm-hmm. gets it but it doesn't mean that in the moment she wasn't you know still reaching for this thing that isn't even really good for her and i think it, i just think it really reads as is how uh, that goes a lot of the time you know um i don't disagree with you it's the fact for me it remains that i did not really like jack from the get-go like no, well i don't think so, any of us did <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm curious about that is that true like is did most people kind of go what's the deal with this chick a lot of people didn't like her um there for mixed reasons so i you know i want to be clear some people just didn't like her because she was taken away from the story a lot of people didn't like the 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 gay relationship even though we already knew that keely was bisexual like she had told us mm-hmm. that in season one i think but a lot of people were put off by that but pushing those people aside there were a lot of people that peeped jack's behavior and were like connecting sharing their own stories about running into a person like this and being like oh mm-hmm. this is not going to go anywhere good and everybody was kind of like a lot of us were just waiting we didn't know what was going to be the shoe that fell but right. we knew his shoe was falling. We just didn't know how it was going to work. And then the way they did it with having this horrible thing happen to Keely. So once again, she's fucking getting kicked in the neck with this mm-hmm. video, you know, being out for the world to see. And and that being the thing that made Jack show us all who she really was. We were like, oh, mm-hmm. there it is. There it is. <laughs> yeah, I think it's like, to me, it seemed pretty clear that Jack was just not trustworthy so the fact that keely is like bought into it and was able to make herself ignore so many red flags and that's you know again i'm not even trying to pretend i haven't done the same thing i just don't like watching it i don't enjoy it and i don't enjoy it with a character that i have felt like has been sort of no nonsense in a lot of ways where I feel like if this were happening to a friend of hers, she would have very specific things to say about it. Mm -hmm. And we haven't like, I feel like I agree with your perspective about how she was coming out of a vulnerable place with Roy, but I, because of the way the show is structured, We don't get to spend, like, quite enough time with her to get the feel for that and why she would be as susceptible as she is. But I also don't want to be spending more time on this Mm -hmm. with her. You know what I mean? So Mm -hmm. we're in this, like, place where I'm like, you're trying to do something and I, I see the, like strokes of what it is and i feel like it could have been done well if you had more time and space but i really don't want to make that time and space at the expense of other things that i'm more interested in Mm. and because you know it it felt to me like 
and again, I think a lot of us have been here when you have been ignoring a lot of red flags and you've been like making yourself ignore them, but you get twinges and you know, some shit is up. A lot of the time somebody like completely shows their hand like this and it causes you to step back and, and be like, wow, I really do have to like start facing the flags that mm. I was ignoring. Mm. And it doesn't feel like she's really doing that. You know, by the time she gets the text later that Jack is in Argentina for a few months is what she mm. fucking says. Mm. I wanted a, I wanted a different reaction than I was getting. Keely just right. seems so devastated and I really wanted her to be like, I should have seen this. And I was purposely ignoring things. And even to maybe like talk with Rebecca about you were right about the love bombing thing. Like mm -hmm. anything that gave an indication that she was processing the reality of what had happened and wasn't still clinging to the idea of a relationship that she was pretending she had. And it right. feels like she's still doing that, you know? Yeah. Well, sometimes that takes time, you know, and it hasn't been that much time. I don't think, uh, that's some of since, it too, is I can't tell with time, you know, a lot. so, yeah. um, so yeah, I mean, it's, this is episode nine. So there's, you know, there's some time left to see where she, Keely, I mean, you know, how this shakes out for her. Um, mm -hmm. but like fucking Ted coming in with the goddamn biscuits, but it's not biscuits. Oh my God. It's just money. <laughs> I thought that she was going to be like, I don't want your money. And she's just like, oh no, no she's she, 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 forgot he didn't get his alert <laughs> glad you made it shit's a little bit messy lately i also um, didn't get my invite don't feel bad <laughs> i had to sneak in the back door <laughs> so then we have the uh ted telling rebecca he's not going to be able to make the press conference because there's a parent teacher conference that he's going to be doing virtually mm -hmm. and he she asked him like how he would feel about Roy doing it. Or I think Keely puts in Roy's name. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, all right. You know, let's go with that. So we have Rebecca going off to tell Roy with Keely in tow. I love this. A little so bit much. of a, a <laughs> moment here. Roy immediately says, I love no this whole interaction. They and realize and stare. That, that is not he the right says, answer. Why can't Ted do it? <laughs> they continue the pause and the stare. And then he <laughs> says, I love you too, with this pained smile. But I then so jump much. to the press conference. I, when he walks not away, him. he curses. And Rebecca right. says, I heard that. <laughs> Just says, Fuck. without even turning and she never even turns around rebecca mm -hmm. keely does rebecca never even turns around i love everything about that exchange <laughs> but yeah they get to the press conference and it's uh well we cut to nate first before we get to the, the press conference it's um, i feel like we could talk about the press conference though okay. because it doesn't have anything and, to do with almost anything right. else except for the talk she has with him later I fuck it. It's, so it's beard, and we, and he is upset, and the whole room is upset with him, and he is going toe to toe about something very, very serious, and then it turns out to be a, uh, who's the best rock guitarist, and mm -hmm. beard is saying Joe Walsh, and everybody in the room is saying Jimmy Page, and I fucking am here for this Led Zeppelin shade. I will always be here for Led Zeppelin shade. <laughs> always, always, always. When he walks out and says, Stairway to Heaven is just the, what does he call it? Uh, um, no memory of it, I'll be honest. I, oh my God, he calls it something great. It's something like, a, it's just an exercise for, I don't know, something really dismissive, but I just loved it. And I just love how A fingering lesson, is. I think he says. <laughs> something like that. Something like that. 
Yeah, uh, I'm going to be honest. I don't understand conversations about music, mostly. I don't know anybody's names. I don't know names of, of like, instruments a lot of the time, unless it's getting real basic. I don't Mm. know anybody. Like, if you name a band and you're like, name a member of the band, literally can't. Sorry. Mm. Like, unless the band is named after the lead singer kind of thing. (laughs) That is not going to happen. So I've gotten like that in my old age. Right over my head. Yeah. What's that? I um I said I've gotten like that in my on my older age. My memory is just shit and I get people confused. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you the truth. I know Joe Walsh's name. I can't remember which band he's in. Like and then the minute somebody would say it, I'd be like, Oh my god, of course. But I don't wanna say who yeah, I don't wanna say who I think it is because I don't wanna look like an idiot. I feel like it's the guy from it's I'm just going to say it. Is it? Go ahead. No, I'm embarrassed. I don't want to say it. What? Just just look it up. Just look it up. <laughs> the Eagles. Oh, I should have just said it. <laughs> I was right. I was right. But I was so like, I'm so, you know what? Like being wrong on a podcast is looking forever. Like 10 years from now, I'll get a, like a message telling me it was the Eagles. Like, I just, <laughs> I just, I don't need that in my life anymore. I just don't need it. So I'd rather just not fucking oh, say man. anything. Oh, man. Did I tell you that somebody tweeted at me today that they were driving and the last episode, the joke you made about the, uh, the boat, the, the fight in Alabama that they like, what do you give me that quizzical look? You know, the fight, you know, the chair I know, fight. Yeah, I know. I just don't remember what joke I made. <laughs> oh, I will. Same. I also do okay. not remember. Okay. Um, <laughs> but they said the Alabama boat choke from Rashawn had me in tears. Not going to lie. I had to pause the show. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, well, good. Good stuff. I love it All when right. people like write a quote and I genuinely find it very funny. And then I realized that was me. They quoted. Like, oh, funny. <laughs> Every now and then it'll happen. I'll be like, oh, yeah, that was a good one, me. Uh, um, so anyway, this this fight, she winds up like having to drag him out. You know, gets gets them. So, to he's pull trying to him get screaming from the he, room. He's still banging with the door from the outside, <laughs> trying to get God. back in. <laughs> Somebody says like he would beat him and he's like beat it's not a competition it's art you troglodyte and i was just like wow he's really he's going for it i like to think this scene they had eight or nine takes and every single one was a different argument that he actually really was very passionate about i love that i love that too because that seems like really on brand for brendan hunt um Mm -hmm. he is just like i know he's not the character but like real life brendan hunt the little bits of snippets i've seen of him he just really seems like a 100 percent in whatever Mm -hmm. it is that i'm into i'm 100 percent into that shit (laughs) like i like i'm not like he doesn't seem like a casual interest kind of guy you know what i mean (laughs) Yes. Yep. Yeah. Very much. Uh, he's like really fell in love with soccer. I, I don't want to say because of the show. It may may have predated the show, but because of the show made him famous. You, he pops up at soccer matches like all over, all the time. <laughs> like he's like a, like a serious, serious fan. <laughs> I'm trying to think like the things that one of us could, and it would have to be trivial stuff. Like we're not getting into any political stuff. Literally any food opinion you could get me in this state. It's not even going to take any effort. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I'm trying mm-hmm. to think what would work for you because you don't have the food thing. Music stuff. I don't know how like passionate in this way that you are about like my opinion is the right opinion. I don't. And you guys who have been listening for a while may have picked up on this. I don't really do my opinion and that's it like i have to argue with you to win you to my side you know i i don't really operate yeah, i like guess that. that's true i think what i think and if you don't think it with me i just decide that you're wrong but i don't need you to know that i think you're wrong 
Mm. I would just go, oh, they're wrong. And then I'm, and I'm done. I check out. Like, I don't, I don't have to, I don't need people to know I'm right. What is that like, Rashawn? Yeah, I know. We're you literally. Very different that way. Like, that's what? why I, yeah, I don't, I don't need people to know I'm right. If I know I'm right. I'm just, oh my God. so I that, don't that get sounds in, so peaceful. That's like, it's that's the way to be. I have a whole other thing that this, this, this just siphons that piece right away. But that's not the thing for me that does it. I have a whole other thing. <laughs> but yeah, and I've and I've always been like that. I've always been like that. Like my brother is uh like a not a need to be right, but but like wants you to see what he's saying and like agree with him. Like, you know, like do you see what I'm saying? Do you see you know, you're very yeah. you're like that you don't as have well. To think the same thing, but I want you to understand the perspective I'm coming from mm-hmm. here, which yeah, that is very much but- my thing. And yeah, and I just like, like you guys know how I feel about The Simpsons, right? You could tell Mm -hmm. me The Simpsons are the worst thing. If I'm in a playful mood, I might like play argue with you. But Mm -hmm. like, you tell me The Simpsons Simpsons suck. And I think this person has no idea what the fuck they're talking about. Mm -hmm. And then I just don't take anything you say serious. But you don't know that. (laughs) You don't know that. But I just, I don't take anything else you think serious. (laughs) Oh, man. I really, I like that. (laughs) That's a much better way to live. I gotta, st- I gotta start trying that on. Uh, um, so careful anyway, what you wish for. <laughs> Rebecca then gets brought in. Well, she doesn't get brought in. She decides to step in and take over. And they decide oh, to ask God. her about Rock as well. This so is she just winds up hysterical. on the spot. Hysterical. And then she's like out in the hall, and <laughs> Leslie <Lincoln> says <laughs> the guy from Creed, Rebecca. <laughs> The guy from Cream who, you get that joke. Oh, Cream. Yeah, Cream. I thought it was Creed. That no, Christian it's Cream. Rock with arms wide open. No, that would be an even funnier joke, though. But that's the joke I, that's, here I thought it was is, hilarious because of that, but please, the let joke, me know. The, the joke here is she meant to say Eric Clapton, and she couldn't think of his name. <gasps> So That's who says, I would have said too. She says Eric the Clinton. guy, the she guy from the Creed. Guy from Creed. <laughs> That's funny. So, um, but Eric Clapton is like uh, the answer I give because it's like a safe answer I've heard other people give, not because it's like really my opinion. No, oh, he's terrible. You know what I mean? She's he's terrible. Awful. Says Rochelle. Look at her. I see. I don't know. Awful. Is he? I don't know how to tell who's a bad guitarist. Like, oh, no, no, no. I don't mean a bad guitarist. I mean, like, I think he's overrated, but, like, whatever. He's, like, lots of people think he's, like, the best there ever was. I don't agree with that. I think he's just a terrible person. <laughs> oh, a terrible person. That's yeah, like, okay. I don't, I don't, I don't know like anything him. about him. Yeah, no, we won't derail the whole the whole Ted Lasso podcast, but I just think he's a despicable person. And it was really sad that his kid died and all, but, um, you know... Sir, you're you're terrible. As somebody who does not know anything about what you're talking about, this is sounding awfully brutal to me. So uh, you're, too, gonna... you're, you're too young. Yeah, you're I do not know. Remember. He had a, a terrible, terrible accident befell his family. His his he had a young son. It was a terrible accident in the nineties. If I want to say he he fell off of a balcony at a high rise or something. Uh, oh awful, awful thing. And then Eric Clapton wrote this song about it, and it was like a number one song for 800 years, it felt like. And uh, I don't want to say it revamped his image because his image didn't really need to be revamped because he had never been held accountable for any of the horrific shit he had said over the years. Like, there's audio. You can just Google him on your free time. Like, there was a concert one time where he, I'm not even getting into it, but yeah. And I know it was the seventies and he apologized. And then he did a whole thing where he just completely ripped off blues musicians. And then he tried to like pay it back by like paying homage to some old blues musicians and like you fucking culture vulture, get the fuck out of my face. Fuck you. All right. I'm done. Sorry. (laughs) That's all right. That's all right. Sorry. Does Jimi Hendrix count as classic rock? Like he does, right? Yes. I don't know if he's a good rocker or like a good player. I don't know. But yes. also, I really enjoy his work a lot. It has a vibe. Yeah. yeah. It's a-, a vibe that goes right up inside your spine and shakes yes. you around. And I like yeah. it. Yeah. 
Uh, that's how I talk about music. I, I was about to like, like, <laughs> derail us again and tell you like a fun story about Jimi Hendrix. He used to Jimmy who played with James Brown. Was it Jimi Hendrix that played with James Brown? Mm-hmm. And uh and then got and then got booted off the tour. I think it wow. was. I can't remember. I think it was, was Jimi Hendrix. Was banging the guy's wife. I don't know if any of them. I don't know, but I want that to be the reason now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we gotta get past this. Scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, All right, Rebecca is heated, and she's talking to Higgins about why the fuck didn't the man I told to do this mm-hmm. as his boss do it? Mm-hmm. And Higgins says it's just Roy being Roy, and she's like, you know what? I am very fucking over us hand waving shit behavior and having Mm -hmm. oh it's roy as the excuse Mm -hmm. no we're not doing this fuck this so she goes to the training room where they're lifting weights and stuff and she yells for roy to get his hairy ass in her office right now she's in all the desk all the boys are like ooh, and then like this line, you guys, I fucking screamed. Did you Every expect this? Single one of you <laughs> knows that I don't have a hairy ass, and not one of you <laughs> spoke up. I am never going to forget that. He is so upset. I just really want to put it out there. Having a hairy ass is not a big deal. If you had a hairy ass, I would frankly expect it. You look like a hirsute gentleman. <laughs> I would bet you had a hairy ass if I were asked to go, you know, make a bet uh-huh. either direction. <laughs> However, the vanity here <laughs> is delightful. <laughs> And the idea that she threw something at him that seemed to actually upset him, I kind of mm-hmm. enjoy because he's otherwise mm-hmm. like, he can be so unflappable when it comes to real insults. He just gets mad right. about weird shit. Right, right. So she's trying to insult him and she succeeded. And that's like kind of right. rare. I love, so I I love that. too. I, I honestly believe that when she says your hairy ass, the way I read, when she says it in the moment, I wasn't thinking that she meant his literal ass was hairy. I meant like, I thought she just, is in general, he's a hairy ass motherfucker. Right? So I just took it as like a holistic, like, you know, like you, you know, your skinny ass, your tall ass, your hairy ass, like whatever your attribute is, you just throw ass on it. So the fact that he then interprets it is a very specific commentary on his actual ass really like sold it for me because I didn't even take what she said that way. I got you. And you were taking it in more like an AAVE way. Probably, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I guess, oh I guess God, that's. Girl. There's a Twitter that I found called Struggle A A V E Tweets. Oh no! And uh, oh no! It's one of those accounts that back... I want to be a little bit better than it is, but it has some really like fun ones on there. <laughs> but anyway, sorry. Um, yeah. and then Isaac's reaction. <laughs> He's right. <laughs> Isaac's so serious. Bless him. He really we're like, all he, we're all cowards. <laughs> I really want to know. I want to see what happens if they speak up and say Roy's ass isn't hairy because I feel like she's just going to impale them on her clipboard. <laughs> That's just a step too far. She was barely holding it together when she came in. They start an argument. And that's it for them. <laughs> Off the team, like I don't think they want. 
I don't think they want any smoke with Rebecca. Yeah. At least not to, not today. <laughs> Maybe another day, but not today. So she, like, she, he, she's in her office and he comes in and is like, I didn't think it was that big a deal. And she says, oh, so you just didn't do it. And she has this look, guys. I love, I love her whole barely contained contempt, but it's like contempt tinged compassion. Yeah. The yeah. contempt isn't it, the primary note, but it's what it, I feel like you come at him with just compassion. That's not pointy enough to get through his head. Yeah, you it's, need the contempt it's, point to drill it's through. The, it's the sort of like hard, you know, hard, tough talk, you know, mm-hmm. that you have to give a person sometimes. It's it's reminiscent of when he kind of tells her, and it comes out harsh, but, but it, yeah, compassion is baked in there. When he's mm-hmm. telling her when he meets that Wings Night guy and he's just like, fuck this guy, you yeah. know? you know, you deserve lightning and, and all that stuff. Like, uh, and she's just sort of like giving him some news. He needs to know in this Mm -hmm. moment, (laughs) you know, telling him a little bit of, you know, telling him a little bit about herself. Uh, and she, yeah, she calls him out on the fact that he is living a very fear based life. Mm hmm. Um, and just she says you're just gonna give up on everything as soon as it isn't fun or easy and then when he doesn't answer she says what do you want Roy and he says I just want to be left alone bullshit Roy you want way more than that you're Mm -hmm. just so convinced you don't deserve anything good in your life that you'd rather eat a bowl of shit soup and then complain about the portions Mm -hmm. get out of your own way because this whole woe is me thing you've got going on is just fucking ponderous yeah (laughs) and i usually have a hard time when people say it's a great word i cannot take it seriously because it got ruined for me many many years ago but uh but it it is a great word and i it's really unfortunate you can't just say that what do you mean how did it get ruined for you what is i I I think I've, I feel like I've mentioned this a couple times on different podcasts. So, so, oh my God, really, really quickly, there's a there's famous audio um, of you remember Casey Kasem, the yeah. countdown radio guy. So there's famous audio that used to float around, and uh, I heard it because Howard Stern used to play it on his show, and it's Casey Kasem absolutely losing his shit, his engineer during a commercial break uh okay. but it got rec- it got recorded and he's yelling because i don't remember exactly how it goes but he's yelling because they went to like upbeat song after like he had to do a death dedication you know people call oh, in with, God. right and he's you can't go to a you know, goddamn blah 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 song and do it. Goddamn, right? <laughs> goddamn. And then when he's done screaming, he just goes, "It's fucking ponderous." And I just, I had never heard the word before. That was the very first time I ever heard it, and I didn't know that it was like a real word. I thought it was just like he was so angry. That, that he, he started just making up, just made up some shit. <laughs> Speaking of tongues, <laughs> <laughs> So now, whenever I hear it, I just think of the fucking Casey K something. I think I actually played that for you when we first started podcasting. I it think I found familiar, that clip so, and played yeah. it and played it for you. Yeah. <laughs> Did you? Uh, is Casey Kasem the one that lived in OJ's pool house? Who no, that cool was house? that was Cato something. The guy Kalen, Cato Kalen, Cato Kalen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Similar uh, alliteration. Yeah, feeling Casey like there's neither of them are real names. He's the one that married that like nine foot tall blonde lady that used to be on Cheers towards the end of the, the end of Cheers. You don't have Diane? any idea what I'm talking about. No, towards the end of Cheers, Carla's ex husband who would make random oh appearances my God. married. 
Remember her really, really tall, pretty with straight blonde hair and a big ponytail yeah, yeah, top? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, my she god, married. what was her name? I keep wanting to say Dolores, but it's not. I would never remember like that. in a million years. But yeah, god, she married Casey Kasem. She had this mm-hmm. really high pitched voice, like mm-hmm. this. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, she was fun. Mm-hmm. Um. All right. <laughs> anyway, so, okay, so he looks uh, like he's about to burst into tears. Actually, when he says when she says all of this. And he finally says, is that all? And she says, yeah, that's it. For now. (laughs) And he nods and walks away. I just have to, again, point out how weird Roy walks. He says a weird walk. (laughs) It's like he's got a mango in each armpit. Just holding his arms out from the side. <laughs> like they can't come to full rest. Like he's got overdeveloped traps or something. Like I don't know what's happening, but sir, you're not an action figure. We don't need to see <laughs> everything about your sleeves. It's fine. Just relax for a second, sir. Nope. Can't um, relax. <laughs> <laughs> so that is the the thing that happens with Roy later um i guess we can bounce backward and talk about Colin and Isaac and what happens well, at the game and then we'll get back to Roy at the end all of right. that yeah so i want to talk about because before the whole thing with beard happens there's the scene with Nate at his office right and, uh, you know, and Jade comes and surprises him and brings him lunch. And they're very cute together. And uh, Rupert happens by while mm-hmm. she's there. And Nate is clearly delighted to have an opportunity to introduce his girlfriend to his boss. And, you know, he's just very excited. I love her reaction to meeting Rupert. Yeah. Um. It's so good. It's she says so good. it's worthwhile to meet you instead of it's <laughs> nice to meet you, which was fascinating to me. Weird way to say that. <laughs> and then once he leaves, she says, well, he seems very wealthy. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> she, he, when, when, he, when he says, he, he says, oh, when she says, you know, he says, oh, Nate, Jay with a lovely name. And she says, yeah, thank you. It's short for jaded. I was named after my mother's least favorite sister or some shit like that. (laughs) Yeah. It's such a weird, because like, she's just being herself the way that she is. And the look that she gives him is so direct and so. There's just a vibe whenever she looks at anybody that Mm -hmm. she has gone right down the receipt to the total at the bottom Mm -hmm. and put it in the ledger and shut the Mm -hmm. ledger and it's done Mm -hmm. like there's just something about her that it's like she's got your number man that's it it's done and i feel like he could tell that and it makes him uncomfortable even though he doesn't act uncomfortable there's just a sense to him absolutely grasping here you know what i mean like like he's trying to work his charm and it's not quite landing the way he's used to Mm -hmm. you know what i mean like it's just i like to consider myself a bit of an amateur dialectologist you are from the south of poland right and she says yes and she says the town she's from but i cannot say it would you look at that smile Jade, if this young man wasn't so brilliant, I'd say that you are out of his league. Mm -hmm. And I really want to mention that when he says that, her face falls a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's not like she's not smiling broadly to begin with. So the fall isn't dramatic. But but it's there. It's very clear that she is not impressed and that Mm -hmm. he is thinking doing this is somehow maybe going to flatter her and she does Mm -hmm. not take it that way at all all she hears Mm -hmm. is that he is insulting nate and is yep not impressed and i feel like again 
that registers with Rupert and he changes the subject again. What is that smell? Because there's food in the room. Uh, it's from Taste of Athens, my favorite restaurant. I'm a hostess there, which is why it's his favorite place, I'd wager. Mm-hmm. And again, there's a sort of he can't have a favorite place unless it's about like it's it, it there's something about him conflating the things that's just very like simplifying and minimizing somehow. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Very annoying. And then he yep. ends it with Nate, don't screw this up. Yep. And it's meant to be, oh, I'm so playful. Mm-hmm. But once you see later what he is doing, yep. it's really fucked up. This man I is like a bad man. When she said when when Rupert leaves and she says a thing about uh he seems wealthy and she says he seems nice like. <laughs> <laughs> yep. yep. I fucking I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Nate doesn't seem to like hear it, you know? He Mm-mm. says he's a really decent guy and I mm-hmm. owe him a lot. Yeah. And that's the part. That's the part that I'm not a fan of. Is anytime somebody says, "Well, I really owe them." There are ways you can say that that it won't get my dander up when you're just being generous to somebody who helped you in certain ways, but there's a tone when people say, I owe them a lot that, you know, when you hear it, when that person has been made to really feel that they owe somebody. And that's a, there's a different pitch to it when people say that. And I think that she can tell immediately that's what's happening. And the, the the scene I texted Rashawn about the other scene with him because Nate stays late working as I sense he often does mm-hmm. and the food is still there you know the dessert and everything and he is just has his back to the door and Rupert comes in and says how are we looking for tomorrow and Nate says maybe we should play without a goalie and give them a chance <laughs> <laughs> Which I did think was kind of cute. Yeah. Rupert really, he says, I love it when you're cocky. Uh, Which, you know, I mean, yeah, but also really you like it when he's being cruel and being a dick to other people. Mm -hmm. But, you know, uh, that's what you like. It's not the cockiness at all. (laughs) But I digress. (laughs) And then... He reaches into the box on Nate's desk and just takes. Nate is about to tell him to help himself and he has already helped himself. It is helped. (laughs) Just takes a piece of baklava. My friends, I think we all know how I feel about food taking. So I don't need to get into that. But the thing going on here is that the baklava is jade. Like, Mm -hmm. there's a real I might scoop your woman sort of feel here that I was thinking was going to lead to him flirting with jade. And I almost Mm -hmm. wondered if that was what he was attempting in the initial interaction. And because she gave nothing back that encouraged him at all. He then decided to go a different way with it eventually because it's very clear that he's trying to fuck things up for Nate on purpose, but you could do that in a number of ways. And so I Mm -hmm. wondered if it would be that he was going to attempt to scoop Jade, which I knew she would have no time for him at all. Like she would not, that would not happen. You know, why, why do you think Rupert is attempting to sabotage this relationship with Nate? So, you know, it's like a couple of reasons, but they all kind of come back to the same place. I think that he can sense Nate's growing confidence and self-assuredness. And he cannot have that because Nate Mm. is meant to be afraid of him and worship him in 
a way that only really works if Nate looks to him for everything. Mm-hmm. So that's, I think, what the deal was with Rupert setting Nate up with that woman initially, Anastasia. Mm-hmm. It's like, if Nate did sleep with her and wound up being in any sort of relationship with her, this would be somebody that Rupert introduced him to that is part of Rupert's world and that he would feel like, oh, I really owe him for hooking me up with this gorgeous model who's totally out of my league. But this is a woman that Nate met on his own that he knows personally without Rupert's interference and who is an unknown quantity to Rupert, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know? And so that is something that's like not a factor that he can control. And it points to the fact that Nate's, getting a little bit more of a a sense of himself because he wasn't as we have seen wasn't somebody that was going to like reach out and be able to ask somebody out he just didn't have it in him and this is a recent development and somebody who's as much of a predator as rupert is when it comes to taking advantage of people he can sense those shifts Mm -hmm. i'm sure you know yeah. So he sees her as like either a symptom of or the origin of a major shift that doesn't work for him. And either he can undermine it by flirting with her and drawing her away from Nate to remind him who the real man is here. And that's who women actually want because I am higher up on the tiers than you. So. Mm-hmm you still should look up to me. You thought you could have her, but she was really using you to get to somebody like me. Right. Or you get Nate to fuck it up so that he hates himself and Mm -hmm. sees himself as a fuck up who ruined a good thing and can't succeed without you. Right. Right. That's That's very good. That's my theory. I like that a lot. I, uh, um, one of the last things Rupert says to Nate, uh, you know, he says there's nothing like the love of a good woman, mm-hmm. you know, and I think that uh, a lot of what you say is 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 really accurate um, that with Jade in his life, Nate is a little bit more self-assured, a little bit more confident, a little less likely to be as needy as we yeah. might need him to remain. I think there's also an element of testing Nate you know Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um and uh he like Rupert thinks that that uh I'm I'm gonna see how Nate responds to this and uh hoping obviously hoping that that Nate would be so eager to impress Rupert that he would be very quick to uh turn his back on his own values to to throw jade under the bus like not necessarily Mm -hmm. like like we know rupert doesn't think that adultery is a game ender right so yeah definitely right so Mm -hmm. in rupert's mind they can go out and have this night and then nate can still have jade right Mm -hmm. in rupert's mind i'm not telling you you have to leave jade just to come out and have a good night with me but um, so he would be happy with either result, whether like they broke up or if Nate just was going to be like a sleazy dude, the way Rupert is. Um, and the mm. look Rupert gives him because Nate backs out immediately, yeah, but he backs out with like a, like a, like a cover story, An which is not even, not even a good one. Right. He's just yeah. basically like, Oh, I, I can't stay. I just wanted to tell you in person that I couldn't make it tonight. And Rupert gives him a look. He doesn't say anything. You guys, that look. He is such a good actor. Yeah. He's just so good. good. My God. Yeah. Like every scene where he comes in and, and they, of course they'll do like a little music sting when he shows up and it's not heavy handed. It's Mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. same music that's been sort of background. And they just add a slightly like, (laughs) <laughs> like danger note just one mm-hmm. note that changes it and makes you go oh boy mm-hmm. and he comes in and it's like the devil himself walked in the room 
everything, <laughs> like my whole body is on alert. Just like, oh, what the mm. fuck is he going to do now? Pay what is this asshole doing now? Yeah. yeah, you know? And, and like, I don't like to throw the word around a lot, but I think that um, Rupert is a really good example, as, as much as you can get in, like, a 45-minute comedy mm-hmm. show, of a narcissist and how they operate. You know, and wa- yeah. and watching and watching how Rupert, like all the little things we talked about in the past, the the keeping Nate on uneven footing. Is it Rupert? Is it Mister Mannion? Like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. one day I'm invited to the fancy club, and then the next day you don't even need to talk to me, and uh, and but always performing when there's a third person in the room. Then it's Rupert mm-hmm. with the charm and, you know, and nobody gets to see. It's just, he's just, he's fucking Anthony Head, right? That's Giles' name? Anthony, Anthony Head? Stewart Head, yeah. He is just really, really eating this whole role up. He really mm-hmm. is. Um, yeah. I think he, I don't, I don't think he even got any kind of nod or like Emmy nod or anything for, for as many Emmys as the show has been up for. I don't think he's ever been. And I think that's a crime. I think he just really did something special this season, this this third season he really did um you gotta get closer to your mic girl oh, sorry yeah. i'm like just rolling away <laughs> so as the night just, as the yeah. night goes i just inch back <laughs> further and further back <laughs> by the time we're done i'll be on the other side of the fucking screen <laughs> she would too you guys she uh, <laughs> um but yeah the but, look uh, gives him it's almost like you're kidding okay like there's there's a real i will let it go but you're not fooling anybody you know and it's it's sinister even though yeah he he doesn't say anything and there's nothing that he can really do like directly in right. the moment you know mm-hmm. it's interesting as well he's acting drunk but I think he's not as drunk as he's pretending to be. I think that's part of trying to manipulate Nate here is is putting on a bit more of a like, oh, we're, we're getting real wild tonight when yeah. he's not impaired the way he's like, you know what I mean? Interesting. I don't, know. Interesting. I don't know that. It just, that's the vibe I get is that he is trying to set a tone for the atmosphere Mm -hmm. And treat it almost like if Nate thinks I'm drunk, then maybe I will remember or care as much about what he's up to. And it'll like, Mm -hmm. like ease the way for him. Right. If I'm already drunk, that will be questionable behavior. That will encourage Nate to kind of catch up because that's the kind of night that I'm telling him we're having. Also, Mm -hmm. I want to make sure that we mentioned that because I didn't even catch it on the very first time I watched, but. They're not, they're going to a private room. Yeah. With these multiple bottles of champagne. champagne. Right. Like they're not even just going to be at a table with everybody. You know, it's, it's, so I was super, super proud of Nate to just be like, yeah, no, I'm not doing this. I wish, like, in a perfect world. Go ahead. I was going to say, in a perfect world, I would have liked for him to be like, fuck this. I'm going home. I'm not doing this. But Mm -hmm. like, that's not happening. Nate's not there yet. That's not happening. Yeah. But I was so proud of him to just be like, danger. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta get out of here. Gotta get out of here. <laughs> get out of the front. <laughs> but yeah, I feel like it's when Nate hears him say we're going to the private room that he's like, okay, I can't even pretend this isn't what this is about. Yep. Like, yep. it's yep. one thing if we're having drinks with these women, I already don't love it but okay but we're going somewhere that other people can't see and where rupert could continue to pressure me in a variety Mm -hmm. of ways and Mm -hmm. uh, it's Mm -hmm. just me and him and these women i doubt it and And also like i know that i know that nate met rupert at the that fancy club uh earlier in the season and that's how he met the model Mm -hmm. but Nate knows that Rupert is married. Yes. And I don't think Nate wants to be Rupert's wingman while he's out banging these different women. True. You know? Yeah. Uh, and, and that's the other thing too, because we know that we know from 
Rebecca that Rupert likes to have like accomplices, you know, mm-hmm. the way he used Higgins, you know, to be his interference with Rebecca and, you know, needed to have Rebecca chaperoned or distracted or whatever. We know that Rupert likes to bring other people into his games and into his bullshit and make other people complicit in his shit. And mm-hmm. I feel like that's another thing he's attempting to do with Nate here is it's not just the power play, not just that I need to show Nate who's in charge, but also like, can I get this guy to betray? Because we know Leslie is a solid family man with, from what we can tell, pretty decent, okay morals. And mm-hmm. yet, Rupert had him betraying and going against his own internal compass, right? Yeah. So I feel like that's another can I layer. Compromise him. Right? That's another layer yeah. to Rupert's fucking bullshit, you know? Um, it's a really good way to have an upper hand with somebody. When you mm-hmm. get them to bend their own rules and establish that you are the kind of person that will do the thing you claim you won't do. And I know now that mm-hmm. you aren't the person you pretend to be. That gives me some leverage over you. That you are acting like you have a like higher ground when we're both aware you have been covering mm-hmm. for my ass and yep you know there's also yep. like i hadn't really considered this aspect of it but my assumption had been sort of if nate went through and hooked up with these women that rupert would find a way for jade to find out that he would try to destroy nate's relationship in this really overt way not making it clear he had got like let her know But Mm -hmm. either letting something slip or setting him up in some way. But it had never really occurred to me until just now, now that you're saying this, that it could be just the satisfaction of knowing Mm -hmm. you're cheating on her and I'm aware of it. And that's all I would need to be able to, like, look at you and put you in your place because I know what you're really doing behind closed doors Mm -hmm. and who you really are. And maybe that's more valuable even than destroying that relationship is being able to eventually destroy it if I felt like it and just constantly hold that over you. Yeah. I don't even know if if Rupert would even care about the ability to destroy the relationship because Rupert doesn't really care about the relationship between Jade and Nate, really. He really only cares about himself. So I the satis- don't fully agree. The sad. I think that the satisfaction of knowing that Nate, that he got Nate to go against his own morals and and compromise himself. I think that's where the satisfaction lies. I don't really see. Ru- I mean, Rupert is a as a son of a bitch and likes to wield power over people, but I don't know if he would give a fuck enough in a real way. To even bother, like, you know, doing something overtly to cause, like, Jade to find out about the shenanigans, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Uh, And I think he would also be really careful playing that game because Rupert is also exposed in that same way, right? Nate knows that Rupert is fucking around on his wife, just like Mm -hmm. Rupert would know. So he, I, I think Rupert would be really, really careful with that part of the deal the whole like oh i can tell jade if you don't toe the line i don't i don't think that that's his jam disagree on a couple points i don't think he cares about the relationship in that it's a really i think he cares about the fact that jade seemed to see through him i think he could sense that she is somebody that would talk sense into nate and he doesn't need somebody like that in nate's life so Mm -hmm. i think that there's a very like personal selfish reason to care it's not about like i want to make you unhappy it's that she is a good influence for your self-esteem which is the opposite of what i want and i feel like he Mm. was able to tell that pretty quick with the way that she responded to him um and maybe assigning too much to that but because of the way that nate's attitude has changed since seeing her or it seems that way i'm sure externally that he would give her some credit with it Mm. and also 
I don't feel like Rupert's that particularly like careful about his affairs. I don't know that if it came out like Nate having the information, I don't know that it would matter to him because he's not hiding it. He's in this bar with tons of people it's with true. his arm around these women. He's had his hand on what's her name's ass and was nuzzling her at a different place. He's fuck, like hooking up with her. That's true. He is careless club. You know, he I is don't careless. I really think he feels <laughs> like there's anything to worry about in terms of, the situation that he's in with his wife, I, I, it's sort of like, what is she going to do? Divorce me? Yeah. Okay. That's you know? fair. He is definitely um, not but, careful and uh, does not seem to really be concerned with being outed in any real way, uh, just based on his behavior. So, yeah. Okay. Um. All right. So. I really wonder if he just goes and hooks up with these two women by himself or does he just, like kind of go maybe never mind now that this whole thing with nate fell through i'm just gonna be like give them the, the champagne i'm going home i think that's really funny i think that that is probably <laughs> closer to the truth but who knows <laughs> i like to think that he's just like just old enough that maybe five years ago he would have pursued it with both of them and now he's like oh this is all a whole other thing and it's not doing that so i'm kind of done you know like mm-hmm. i don't know ready to that's go what i feel put his that's socks yeah on. The, the whole <laughs> night was like it's supposed to, yeah i think he was he was excited for what he thought he was about to make nate do and once mm-hmm. that didn't happen i felt like his excitement just kind of like his lost his chubby you know and just fucking <laughs> <laughs> um all right so all right we talked about nate and uh Rebecca and There's something Roy. too about when Nate says I thought it was a guy's night and he says, Oh, trust me, it is and I was just like, Oh look. How Close. cute is it when when Rupert asks him if he wants to go out for drinks after the game and he Nate goes, Oh, should I invite Jade? Yes. <laughs> it's so cute. He's so happy. And and then when he says no, it'll be a guy's night, oh, that'd be lovely. I mean I mean cool. cool. That's cool. <laughs> and Rupert turns away from him with this little grin on his face like, ah, I still got him. Like, mm-hmm. there's a real smugness to his expression after that exchange. <laughs> so uh, so then we go to the game itself. Uh, Nate is at his game, and then Richmond is playing, and we are at the pub, and it is so busy and so packed that she's got to serve beer and champagne glasses. And, she, and May is just like, you know, she, because so when, the, when the team was on the skids, we saw like how bad business was, right? So, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so then we, we have our boys drinking, and then one of them is just like, I think it tastes better, <laughs> <laughs> which everything tastes better in a champagne flute everything there is like science to back that the shape of glassware can change the way things taste um but you know there's a lot of like micro breweries and stuff that take that shit to a <laughs> extreme. and they're like we had this glass specifically made oh for our God. white pilsner and it's just like i've All seen right, you know glasses. what yeah yeah you know what i'm talking I, about i have no patience for any of that as much as i love drinking <laughs> I have no patience for, <laughs> for any of that. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to say something else, like specific about a beer or like, you know, no, Pilsner. No, no, <laughs> Pilsner suck, by the way. Don't yeah, I'm not a, not, a, not a fan. I just like a regular old fucking American lager. I'm super fucking basic. You I know, like, like those, just... uh, South Philly Taproom has it. They, they have this uh, sour beer, like, uh, I think it's fl- a Flemish red and it mm. is like a mouth puckering, almost like that sour cherry, but it's not sweet. It's a little sweet, but it's a it's a beer, but it just has a really sharp sourness to it. The mm. fucking best. I was really hooked on that shit, and it was not cheap, so I couldn't drink it that often. But uh, uh, that was something that I wasn't really into beer, which was frustrating for Brendan. I'm sure it was. <laughs> and this was one of the few that I was like, uh, more of this, please. Thankfully, <laughs> his, his company started to do a lot more with cider. And I was like, all right, now we're talking. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, so yeah. The, the game, the big game. Yeah, the big game. Uh, this is uh, a couple of things are happening here. So uh, this is when we find out 
we talked earlier about Keely getting a text and finding out that Jack is just going to be in South America for a couple of months now. So the reality yeah. of like this relationship being done for real is like, all right, that's going to be it. And uh, <laughs> fucking go ahead and tell me all the things you didn't <laughs> like about her. And Higgins <laughs> is fucking hideous about her handshake. He's fucking <laughs> savage. <laughs> You get really, it. You're friendly. Really is. <laughs> He's so serious about it. Too. They're both looking at, like because when you open up that door, it can you, anything can walk through it, right? Mm -hmm. But you're you're not expecting the handshake critique, and you're not expecting it to be like locked and loaded and just waiting for an opportunity to come out. Yeah, uh, and then again, he's so fucking passionate about it. like he really means this shit. He did not like that handshake. He didn't like it. He didn't care for it one bit. I <laughs> and love he's been, it. He's been holding it in out of respect. It's like for Keely. he's <laughs> fucking uh, what's his name when he shakes George Bush's hand, and then completely, oh it's like God. I don't know if I can vote for this man anymore. When Hank meets that? George Bush and he has that yeah. fucking lip. That limp fucking handshake. And he's just like, it changes his shook. entire world video. Um, <laughs> I have to say, look, I know, I know that I talk a lot about how stunning Rebecca is and I don't take any of it back. Keely is looking amazing in this scene. And I'm realizing, I don't know if they changed makeup artists, maybe, from last season to this. Everybody is looking a lot more what's the word i want snatched mm. than they did i think i kind of want to do like a side by side but because this fucking thing won't let me do screenshots i can't mm. easily do that but the there's just a very polished clean edge to their makeup that i feel like we either didn't have in the first or maybe the second season i don't know but it's enough that i'm noticing and mm. Keely's like just flawless right here, completely airbrushed smooth. You know, I'm yeah, like, did they just yeah. add CGI this season? Is that what it is? Like, I don't know. There was a couple of parts earlier in this season where I feel like Keely looked a little like fried, yes. and, and and yeah, and like I was, I was like thinking that what you're thinking now, like. Maybe the makeup department changed. Maybe she's, you know, filming something else at the same time. I mean, she did pop up on that movie I watched it or that series that I watched, but uh, I don't know if they were filming at the same time. I don't really know why that would have any bearing on anything, but she, like, there were a couple of times looking at her the series the season, and I was just like, what are they doing to my girl? But she looks phenomenal in this episode. <laughs> I'm almost wondering, like, and, and I sort of want to take note on this now, Rebecca especially looks spectacular and the lighting seems more bright and diffuse around her and i'm wondering does keely just look amazing here because they are doing extra work with the lighting when rebecca's on screen and it just mm. happens to also make keely look amazing i feel like maybe because rebecca's been like glowing like yeah poreless yeah. golden brown just unbelievable looking yeah. and she's always been beautiful but there's something else happening there's something <laughs> doing something so maybe it's just splash over i don't know i don't mm. know but i'm gonna be paying attention mm -hmm. um so we get so, a, a scene in the locker room where the guys are all like you know going in to go out and colin puts his hand in and then isaac moves his hand and totally it is ignores him it is it really is, awful i have my screen frozen right on that moment and colin's face is just, so bad you guys my god it is and he can't like do anything he can't call it out he can't like he just has to fucking yeah and earlier there was a moment where he runs to uh talk to trent while ted is on his <laughs> conference call and yeah. it's just like Isaac fucking knows, and now he's not talking to me. And and Trent is just like, well, you have to give him time. You know, you've known for twenty years. He just found out. And Colin is like twenty years. I knew. What did he say? I came out of my mother's womb and never looked back. <laughs> yeah, I love that. He's just like, I don't need any more of that. Oh, good. <laughs> 
Good yeah, movie, Stacey sir. in the chat is mentioning too about how Rebecca's hair is down so much more this season, which we talked about earlier. But it also does like having her hair down just softens her whole face up, in my opinion. Um, and the color really... is like contrasting so beautifully with the tan that she's got going on that it's like, mm. ew, oh, so mm-hmm. disgusting. She just makes me <laughs> so grossed out. <laughs> So uh, the first half of the game, uh, the boys are not playing great. They make a couple of like dopey errors and Mm -hmm. um, Isaac makes one and gets really frustrated with himself. Colin makes one and he goes kind of overboard yelling at Colin about this error that he's made to the point that Sam has to come in and break it up a little bit. And then... You know, the half is over and they are about to go to the locker room and there's a fan that we have been seeing throughout the first half of the game that's being really abusive in the stands, you know, Mm -hmm. and everybody's ignoring them because it's whatever, you know, they're going to do what they're going to do and say what they're going to say. And then the fan drops the F word. Yeah. And Isaac goes completely fucking bonkers over it and yeah. charges into the stands and gets right up in the in the the fans face and it's it's like a mess you know you don't you don't go into the stands uh that's not my rule i say go in the stands but i am not a professional athlete you probably Agreed. shouldn't be listening to me and that has happened in real life you know uh like 15 years ago or so it happened at a basketball game do you remember that where the guy i can't remember which player it was because i don't i don't fucking watch it but I don't. Uh, it was like in the, in the early to mid two thousands. I was still living in North Carolina at the time. It was had to be early because I was still working at the first hotel. And a uh, basketball player charges into the stands and like gets into a thing. Can't remember if he oh, actually shit. hit the guy or not. But yeah. But uh, so yeah, so Isaac does that, and then they all go into the locker room. <laughs> it is, and everybody is like super quiet, and Ted gives him like a beat. And it's finally mm-hmm. it's like, so nobody has anything to say because when the scene happened and I was watching it, I was like, why is anybody talking? And then Ted mm-hmm. is like, why isn't anybody talking? <laughs> <laughs> I really like the way that they do this too. They have the guy say it, but they like, and they don't bleep it. They just sort of blur out the sound around the word when he says it, but they keep the Mm -hmm. camera on him so that you can clearly see what the fuck it Mm -hmm. was that he just said, which Mm -hmm. I think is a really good way to do it. Have it be like, we're not going to like dance around what he said. We're we're showing you what the fuck this man is like, but we're also not going to like put this language out there because there's something different about hearing it you know um and then when he when isaac is going up into the stands i really like that as this guy is beginning to go off he's got a friend with him who is kind of grabbing at his arm as he's losing it and trying to pull him down like clearly sort of embarrassed by his friend Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. once isaac is up in the stands that guy is standing next to his friend and like really like what the fuck dude like you can sense that his friend is really upset that he's Mm. acting like this which i really appreciated because sometimes there'll be very little attention paid to the behavior of the people around somebody who's acting up and i like it the note of it being like even his own friends they don't condone this and they don't like it and they wouldn't have been if he weren't there it's not like they would also have said it you know he was just uniquely awful yeah. Uh, um, when this happens too, uh, when the guy says it, I Isaac is behind Colin. Mm-hmm. The guy says it. Colin stops, puts yeah, his he head like down, flinches, yeah, and then and and then Isaac fucking loses his shit. But he yeah. sees how Colin reacts to mm-hmm. hearing that. And, but, but, but Isaac doesn't say, what did you call him? He says, what did you say to me? What did you call me? Like, he doesn't, yeah. you he know what I mean? He takes it on himself, which is really great. I love it. Yeah. 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 Which you could, if you still don't really trust that Isaac is going to be supportive of Colin, you could take it as 
I'm being called Ab- this and that absolutely to me. Absolutely. But I I could see that's not what was going on. And then later yeah. on when uh, Ted is saying like, what did he say? And he said, he said some ignorant shit. I was like, okay, yeah, see, um, uh, but when this was it, happening, I was just really glad. Good. Good. For I, you, um, Isaac. I don't No red cards. He fucking you know, it's a man screaming slurs. It's fine. And he didn't even really get good punching punch either. Yeah. No, he just kind of got up in his face. Mm-hmm. But uh, there was, um, you know, I when I first watched this, I was really worried about how Isaac was going to take it. But but what I mean by that is I was worried because, you know, it wouldn't be unrealistic if they had had Isaac react in a way that was less than supportive. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Professional athlete. Sports are still really heteronormative. Not a lot of tolerance there in the locker room. You know, it's just, it's, it's not like how we would like it to be. Right. So it wouldn't mm-hmm. have, I couldn't have even, if the show had done that, everybody would have been like, well, that's super realistic. I didn't want that to be what, what I did. I didn't want to watch that. I'm not interested in watching that. Agreed. Even if it is based on real, even if that is really how it happens in life, I'm not particularly interested in seeing that. And I was worried turned out needlessly that the show was going to lean into that and it was troubling for me one because I didn't necessarily want to watch it and two you know uh I really wasn't interested in seeing a a black man in particular in you know be sort of like the face of that sort of uh you know homophobia home uh you know, just antagonism. I didn't want to see that. And I didn't want to see it from that character. So yeah. I was really hoping, 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 hoping that this was going to turn out to be what it ended up turning out to be. But I wasn't certain, you know, yeah. I wasn't, I had, I had a, like a lot of anxiety around it. Um, it felt to me like what I was watching was a man who was hurt at the betrayal of not knowing something so significant about one of his best friends, but I just mm-hmm. wasn't a hundred percent sure the show was going to do this, you know? Yeah. And so yep. I was really, really glad, but for me, I, there was some tension there and I wasn't sure how it was going to go. So this was effective. It worked with mm-hmm. me in a sense of being like, God, is this just another example? Like, please, I don't want it. I don't want this. Yeah. So when we get to the locker room scene, it was like, whew, yeah, thank you, right? God, that Dodge was hard. Devil like it. you know, mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. I was, I was just, I was, it was, I was incredibly grateful. And um, <laughs> this fucking the the locker room scene. I, I, all right, so go ahead. All right, so now we're in the locker room. What what mm-hmm. just happened? I was about to say something and then you interrupted yourself. Yeah, because I realized I was I had already talked a bunch. So now like I'm letting you like jump back in and tell us what you think about things. (laughs) (laughs) Well, basically when they try and like press Isaac for uh what was said, he acts like he's not gonna say because I guess he's assuming nobody else heard. But Sam heard, he says the F he the man said the F word, and Jamie is like fuck and he says no the other f word and jamie goes fuck which i thought was pretty fun um and isaac kind of just storms out at this point they they they, one of them says i think it's jamie again you it's just poopy it's just poopy you gotta let it roll off and ignore it and he stands up and says ignore it i don't want to ignore it what if one of us is gay we shouldn't have to take this shit Mm. and storms out and ted makes to go after him but instead roy steps up and is just like i'm gonna take care of this yeah so he goes and ted tells this story that i don't want to (laughs) retell it was the least effective, I think, of every speech Ted has ever made, <laughs> which thankfully it, he cops to at the end. Yeah, just being like, just this is poorly just thought out. The mark. I fucking yeah. two great moments in this scene. Uh, Higgins comes in to let everybody know the fan has been ejected. Mm-hmm. 
And then says, I want to apologize for my dad. <laughs> I fucking forgot about How did I forget about that? You guys, I snorted so loud. Like, I snorted much more at how much he did not read the room than I did then, at the joke itself. But... And then yells at himself for not literally not reading the room. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and then, um, what was the other thing I wanted to mention? That was phenomenal. And then Danny huh. says, big whoop, you're gay. We don't care. And that's, that's sort of what makes Ted give the speech. And what it comes down to, and I really appreciated this, is, hey, we do care. We care about you and learning yeah. about you. And mm-hmm. I really liked that because a lot of people yeah. will just be like, ah, oh, what difference does it make? And it's like, yeah. The same no, as being like, oh, I don't see race. It's like, exactly. that's part of exactly. who a person is. You can't just be like, that yep. doesn't count to me. Well, then you're yep. not acknowledging the whole existence of a person and what they live yeah. in their daily. Like, yeah. it's just weird, you know? So, yeah, oh, I, I don't, love, I I don't I... see you as fat. I guarantee you everybody else does. So I don't know what to tell you, my friend. Like, you know? Um <laughs> That's like a, so, yeah. uh, I just that girl Jasmine on TikTok. She was just like a really quick sound, and she's just like, "Fucking, you know what I hate when I say something about me being fat, and then my my friend would be like, oh, girl, shut up, you're not fat, you're cute, bitch.' I didn't say I was ugly. I said I was fat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yup. That reminds me of that shirt. I, it comes up in my memories every now and then that I shared, and it said, "Bitch, you're skinnier than me, not prettier." Right. And I just always loved that shirt and was just sort of like, "I should go get that," but I don't want to. You start really shit. should. I don't Girl, wear shirts. Shit. Oh, that's right. You don't. That's right. You're not, not a really person. Um. I can't remember what the other funny thing was, but that. But uh. Oh, the other funny thing from the scene, fucking. When Isaac leaves the room because he's been red carded, he has to give the captain an armband and he gives it to Sam. And there's an interaction with Jamie trying <gasps> oh to be my like, God, I forgot. Give me, give me, you know, and they like, the, you know, there's no words. It's just for like Jamie being like, give me that. Come on, give it to me. Give it to me. And then Sam acts like he's going to unwind it, but then it's just the finger. <laughs> I swear to God, every time I think that I'm over Sam. He does something like this, and I'm just like, God, he's so hot. Stop. Why? That that finger and the grin, the grin, and the is so good. It's oh. so good. It's so good. Oh, it's so good. So, uh, Roy, <laughs> fuck, I can't remember his name. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Roy goes and talks to uh, Isaac in the other room and basically is just like, whatever you're angry about, you need to deal with that shit because you're just going to fucking ruin everything. You know, it's just going to get out of control. You got to fucking get a handle on whatever the real issue is. And you don't have to tell me about it, but you got to figure that shit out. And Will the kit man is in the other room and all of a sudden you just hear him go, you know, he's right. (laughs) Will, what are you doing? He gives him like a little, a little metaphor about snowflakes turning into avalanches and they, and they appreciate his insight. And then Mm -hmm. he's like, tries to invite them for, and they're like, that's enough. (laughs) Don't push it. it. You got, you got one attaboy. That's yeah. Calm down. Calm down. And he's me trying to become uh, a coach like Nate. I, I lo- it's so funny. <laughs> Everything. Uh, and then meanwhile, the boys in the locker room are wondering, well, this means Isaac is gay, right? Clearly that's, mm-hmm. that, that's what's happening here. And they all jump to this conclusion. And then finally Colin stands up and we don't actually see him say it. Doesn't he? Right. I thought we did. I don't think so. He stands up. <laughs> Stacy. He... No one ever checks for Will they before they don't. have private conversations. Will it's is on them. He he is always in the crevices, just doing his job. And there's you know what? There's a <laughs> there there's a lot of like open spaces in this locker room that I don't. I've never played a team sport, so I really don't know what locker rooms look like. 
definitely don't know what a professional locker room looks like. But they're like all these cubbies and shit. But then there's mm-hmm. like when there's like doors that have windows that aren't like filled in. He's for just reasons. kind of furniture. You know, and they see him. It's just like doesn't register. (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, we keep having Will pop up in these places, and I it is like clearly a running joke at this point. And I'm here for it. I'm really here for it. But uh, but yeah, with Colin, I don't. He stands up, says Isaac's not gay. Wait, I'm trying to wait. Uh, Um, but but he doesn't. We don't see him. Stacy says he's gay. Don't see him. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, um and yeah just, then they, so just, we like jump away but then when we come back it's clear the news has been shared yeah 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 and every i love to there's a moment where uh <laughs> where they all after they've said you know it might be isaac then there's like another comment about how there's probably more than one gay person in the room i think it's jan moss is like 10 percent of the mm-hmm. world is you know and yeah. they all start looking at jamie <laughs> I love Jamie. It's just, oh, I'm flattered. <laughs> um, and so yeah, we come back, and he's he's told everybody, and everybody is just like super supportive, and um, it goes like really, really well. Um, I don't know if this is what it would be like in real life. Probably not. I wish it were. Yeah, maybe, same. Maybe. I mean, I know things have changed. I don't know how much they've changed. But I love that the show said we're just going to show people being their best versions of themselves because that's what we're doing. That's what we do mm-hmm. on our show. Mm-hmm. And and uh, there was, uh, you know, some people thought it was unrealistic and it was corny. I don't care. I feel like it was just very in tone with what the show does in general. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's really interesting how we care so much about realism for certain things mm-hmm, and not mm-hmm. others. Like the 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 whole team has been so supportive of one another in so many ways throughout so many things, massive changes, and yet when there's a gay player all of a sudden it's like, well, come on. Yeah. And it's like, well, people cooperating to the level this team has been in general is not realistic there's very little dissent or infighting or anything and that's Uh not really how it is either so why don't we just let that be what we're doing it's fine Mm. anyway whatever so uh and uh after it's all done trent checks in with colin and is like all right well like what did you think you know like mm-hmm. was it better or worse than you and he Colin says uh it was the second best possible scenario the best possible scenario is that the rest of the team comes out as gay <laughs> i love that because that was exactly what i was thinking it was like i think the only other better way is like literally everybody is also like oh good now we don't have to keep up the charade <laughs> And so they go back to play and we don't really see the game, but they win. And not only do they win, but Colin is like the MVP. He, they get two mm-hmm. goals in a second half. So they win two, one, he assists on both goals. And there's just talk about how he, he has played like a new man. You know, they like, they don't even know yeah. who this guy is. A man is, reborn. Right. And, uh, very heavy. Symbolism. You know, it's fine. It, it really is. It's super, super heavy. But you know what? Uh, what can you do? Uh, yeah. So uh, I'm trying to Sorry. think where we're at. Uh, oh, yeah. So now we're... The, I love this... Uh, the press conference think, with Roy? Yeah. I, I, just, I was just at the part where they end the game, and then they're just, like, hugging everybody, and Colin's hugging everybody, and it's just... It's very, very sweet. I don't know. <laughs> um. um so Roy, he he takes the press conference and he pulls a TED. I love this. Which is to say, to answer a question, he tells a very specific personal story. Yeah. And he First explains. All, can guys, we just, he calls the guy New Trent. <laughs> like he just, mm-hmm. he just not New Trent. <laughs> like, and then yeah. and the last person he calls 
we don't see the Goblin King. You know who he's talking I to, know right? Who that is no who. All right, the Goblin King is David Bowie in Labyrinth, right? With the blonde, with the blonde hair. That's like a. And, what do you call so, it? I'm just gonna say in the Mohawk. movie, it's it's kind of like a mullet. It's like a spiky mullet, mullet. a little bit in Thank the you. in the movie in the movie. Mm-hmm. But throughout this press conference, they close up on a on a a person with platinum blonde hair, a woman in the front row. We never really see her talk or ask questions, but oh, the camera's okay. on her a couple times. So. That's got to be who he's talking to, even though That's we don't amazing. really see it. The Goblin King. Can you At least imagine? That, that is my my fan theory. Anyway, I can't prove that that's what's going on there, but I, I'm going to stand by it. <laughs> I like it. But yeah, he explains that um, when he was coming up, there was a player who was older and uh, his wife was pregnant. And Roy made a joke at one point about how he himself was really the father and the guy lost his entire shit yeah. and beat Roy so bad that he couldn't play for a long time. Yeah. Broke and three the ribs, guy himself shipped a got, tooth. Yeah. The guy himself got kicked off the team and then was never able to be hired again anywhere. And it basically completely tanked his whole career. Mm-hmm. That was the end of that. And Roy eventually healed up goes to see the guy apologizes and yeah he bumps into him at a bar to him right he's the dude explains to him that his wife had miscarried like the week before roy made that joke and they hadn't told and it anybody was just like it was not about roy it was just that roy happened to push on a sore spot and he reacted Mm-hmm. And when you haven't dealt with your rage surrounding something, it will pop up in really weird ways that make you seem totally that irrational. Correct. That is correct. And in fact, it is mm-hmm. actually pretty rational. It's just that you have not allowed yourself to be rational about it. So you make yourself look like a fucking psycho. Because you wait until it's built up this kind of pressure that the explosion, mm. you know, it's like shaking it's the, a bottle of soda and leaving it for somebody to open. Like It's the snowflakes that Will was talking about, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, to turn into an avalanche. And I love that when Nate tells that story to the reporter, he ends it with saying, you know, none of us know what's going on with other people in their lives, mm-hmm. right? And, and and but then he says, "But it's none of my business, right? What's going on? You know, it's none of your. Mm-hmm. I think he says my or you. I think he says my business, but I feel like he meant your fucking business or our fucking yeah. business. You know. Um, and they uh they kind of accept that shit. There's not like a lot of follow up, but but really, what happened? You know, mm-hmm. uh, and there's like." I think in between there's like a little bit of Do a cut to the pundits. the behavior? And he's like, what a stupid fucking question. Yeah. <laughs> I love that too, because they're all nervous that Roy's taking the press conference. Cause this is a big press conference. Cause this is right after, you know, Isaac being in the stands and shit. This is not like a, like the one that Rebecca had asked Roy to do was just a, like, whatever. Just like a general mm-hmm. fucking nothing particularly pressing has happened. It's going to be on all the papers, right? And he right. blows that one off. He shows up and does this one and he hasn't been asked to do this one. And, and, yeah. and Rebecca actually says to Keely, did you give Ted his talking points? Because she's so concerned about this press conference. And Keely has to be like, I haven't done that in a minute. And mm-hmm. then Roy walks out. So they're all really, really worried about how he's going to handle it. And then you're right. That's his, the first question is that. And his answer is that. And they're all just like, oh, this is not going to go well at all. And then he ends up like just fucking hitting it out of the park. Yeah. There's a story too <sighs> at the pub because the pundits are talking about Isaac and how that, that fucking coach from season one is still on TV talking shit. That George guy. That guy. Oh my right? God. Right. Yeah. He's, so he's, so he's like the pundits are talking about Isaac and he's talking about how terrible Isaac is. And that's why he couldn't be captain when he was coaching and blah, 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 blah. And May says, 
she knows the fan that said it and that he's a piece of shit and that he was actually Mm -hmm. in the bar one time and gave her niece a hard time and all the boys were like claire not our claire fuck him (laughs) cunt (laughs) yeah I really enjoy that. Just like the, the commiserate, like, oh, I know that fucking piece of shit. Mm-hmm, this is what happens mm-hmm. on Twitter. Somebody acts up, gets filmed, and then they get posted and somebody's like, all right, who is this? And all of a sudden you've got, oh my God, he used to come into the bar all the time and try and grab mm-hmm. ass and he mm-hmm. never tipped. And it's just yep. like one person after another. Did you yep. see this thing with the fucking, uh, the blind side family? Yeah, girl. Yeah, and I saw that there shit. were there was one thread after another on Twitter of people who had had like personal beefs with them on minor. Oh, things. really? Oh, like I didn't know. One. I didn't know that. So many. It was like really. And I think because their name were was being searched by so many people, those tweets were getting like hearted so much that they were coming to the top of the feed a oh, lot. Oh wow! So I just kept running into one after another. Really, of like the various things, especially the wife had done, like either kind of conning people or demanding things. Um, mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. she like there was one woman who worked at a restaurant and she said she would always demand to sit in a booth at prime dinner hour that takes six people. And it was her and her husband only. And she would demand to sit there. And our manager was a fucking pushover. So he'd always make us mm-hmm. clear the space for them. Oh, shit. And then up oh, we are up on our, our crowd cast time. I keep forgetting. <laughs> um, but he'd make us make space for them. And then she would tip like 8%. And another person who said that she would come to the bar and just the bar that she worked at and completely like take up all the space and be really loud and like trying to draw attention to herself in this way that was just like embarrassing. Uh, there was another one where she was at some restaurant. I don't remember if it was a restaurant that she owned or what. But she like posted a Facebook status about these this couple of kids and how there was two black kids who were sitting in a booth talking and that her friend had said to her, those two look like they're about to make trouble. And she's telling the story and she's like, so I went over to them and sat down with them and talked to them. And it turned out they were just, um, you know, figuring out how they could put money together for a school field trip. So we gave them all the money they needed and bus fare to get there. And the there's a photo of her with these two kids, and the kids do not look interested. And then a screenshot of a comment. One of those kids saw her post and commented and was like, yeah, we weren't doing anything. And she just, like, came over and started talking to us like we were doing something wrong and then tried to give us money and we weren't taking the bus we both had bikes so i don't know why she put in that she gave us bus fare like we're it feels uh-huh. like she's trying to imply something but that this wasn't sounds something so we needed. and i was just like it was just one thing after another like that i haven't been Tons interacting of- with any of the stories i posted the one story when the news came out but i haven't but i've been like avoiding comment threads and shit because because you know i mean white people aren't safe a lot of times when stuff Mm -hmm. like this comes up and i just want to spare myself the trouble and the and the fucking agitation and quite frankly you know the anger and the heartache yeah so i've been staying away but i did see a post today where the producers of the film came out to co-sign their the family's version of events Ew. To imply that he, this man is lying about oh, his, about his own life. That. Yeah, the Jesus. producers are like, we 100% can can vouch for the veracity of the claim that the two boys are making. and da, 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 As if... But I'll tell you what. The one thing I saw, that, and, and it was all I needed to see, was a meme. And it said... Y'all want to know what happened? Why he's bringing it up now? He just got married recently to a black woman. 
<laughs> oh shit! And she was like, mm, "None of this sounds right to me." Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love that. I didn't realize I love it that. Too. So I mean, and again, it was just a, it was a, it was a picture, a photo of his wedding. I don't know if the white, you know, I don't know, but oh, I sure. loved it. Yeah. I was, I was like, yeah, it. I'm a hundred percent here for it because it feels, it feels correct. I don't know what else mm-hmm. to say. It feels correct. But um, and for those yeah. who aren't aware, it what happened was that this, you know, the whole Blindside movie. I'm sure y'all have heard of, but it turns out they lied about adopting him. And they basically let him think he had been adopted when really what they got was a uh, conservatorship that caused them to be able to profit off of his story without having to give him a cent. And they just basically misinformed him and he trusted their word on it and never looked into it until somehow the idea came to him that maybe I should check up on that to only to discover he had never been made a member of their family. They had just yep. taken control of his life and his story and taken it away from him and profited off it and not, not given him anything from it. Yeah. Which is just so incredibly white that it's mm-hmm. almost like this can't be real. It's too white. Yeah. But it is I, quite white. I watched that movie under duress, you know, which is, mm-hmm. it, uh, I had no intention of watching it. And then, uh, someone, uh, wanted very much wanted me to watch it and so i watched it at their house and um where'd you go i really i really i dropped something sorry i really (laughs) regret it i really regretted having watched it i really wish i hadn't seen i knew i wouldn't like it from the jump Mm -hmm. but uh and uh it felt really exploitive when i watched it i felt gross having watched Mm it i um didn't i mean i wasn't surprised at how well it did because people love that story no matter how many times you tell it it doesn't even have to be true people love those stories and uh and then you know old girl won her oscar for it i think Mm -hmm. and you know it was it was a big sensation and everybody loved it and it just felt really really gross to me and the only solace i had was thinking to myself, well, maybe they do care about him. Yeah. You know, the movie mm. is gross because, you know, but maybe in the privacy of their own home, maybe they really do take good care of this kid. Maybe they really, he is their family, you know? Mm-hmm. And then to find out that that isn't even fucking true. Yeah. It was really gross too, the way they just portrayed him as just being this fucking illiterate you know yeah fuck it you know that was just, one uh, of the things that caused like the schism with him and the family initially apparently was like mm. when he saw it and he realized that they had signed off on making him seem like he was like of subpar intelligence mm-hmm. in order to make the whole thing even more like moving mm-hmm. he was really mm-hmm. pissed about it and uh yep that was the beginning of the the end of their relationship but uh, uh but um, how do we get on to the fucking blind side? Oh, oh Twitter? Yeah, how... No, I don't. I don't even know how we got there. I don't remember. I'm so sorry. But I, um, it was, it, I'm sure it was my fault because, like, anytime there's a tangent where we literally don't know how we got on it. <laughs> but um, so the rest of the episode is uh after the game, and then we we check back up with Nate. He's meeting Rupert at the club, but we talked about this pretty much in depth we didn't really talk talk about about the end to his girlfriend it's exactly what i was going to say so he leaves and he goes to jade's apartment and just gives her this hug you know i wanted to she's reading something that i meant to like google what that was because i feel like it's important um, haruki murakami hold on let me look up i can't remember if that's how you say his first name um yeah haruki murakami i've read one of his books norwegian wood i think was the name of it i don't i don't know Um, him i don't know that work at all but yeah yeah here yeah norwegian wood he he, this is funny uh brendan was like so you remember back in the myspace days where you had that little spot on your myspace where you could say what like your favorite authors and music were and stuff yeah you used to be able to do that on facebook yeah uh, I miss I old was Facebook. I into Brendan 
and saw on his Facebook that he liked Murakami. And so I went and got a Murakami book and read it so that I could just drop innocently. Did you really? A Murakami book when I talked to him the next time. Did yeah. you? And I <laughs> know it. So that, that's funny. That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever done that. Like, uh, just done something to, to, like solely to impress a dude. No, I mean I've done things to like impress guys. I'm sure, but I don't think I've ever like done like that type of thing with like like finding out something they're into and then get and then checking it out so that I could casually drop it. You know. I don't think I've ever mm-hmm. pulled that. It's a good move. I just never pulled it. <laughs> it worked. I remember his very strong response when I mentioned having read it and it meant something to him. And of I course. came clean later and was like, hey, oh, by did the way, you? I only read that because it was on your, your MySpace. And he was like, wait, really? And I said, yep. And That's you can see so he was a little great. disappointed. He's like, but you really read it though. And I was like, oh yeah, no, I, I read the whole book. Like I wanted <laughs> to know what I was talking about. I wasn't going to just lie about it. That's awesome. And, uh, but you that know, I, I to sort of improve it for him that I'd at least read it. I, I love it though, because the, it just never occurred to me to like manufacture that. But you know, that with that, when that moment happens organically with someone mm-hmm. and you know, and you, they, they like a thing. Like I remember, uh, well, now that we've over, t- we were over our podcast time, I don't feel so bad about sidetracking now. Um, <laughs> when the very, very first night that I hung out with Steven after like, it took us a long time to connect. And I've told you guys that story before, you know, of having met him and did not, and not seeing him again for several years and blah, 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 blah. So the very, the, the very first night that we hung out, you know, and we didn't know anything about each other. And we did one of those things you do when you're in your twenties, where you meet a person and you literally stay up all night talking. Yep. Like, I like we granted the date started at like midnight because he had to work, but we I left his apartment at like seven o'clock the next morning. We just talked like all night, and he was like all animated. And he's telling you, know, Steven's really really into music, so he's telling me you know the things he loves, right? And mm-hmm. he starts talking about this band. And I, and I, I was like, oh, and I knew exactly the band he was talking about. I, I knew all of this shit and his face, cause he didn't, one, he had no idea who I was, right? He didn't know anything about me and granted, you know, and he made some assumptions, like just some, some kind of assumptions you make about people. Right. So the mm-hmm. assumption would be that me, like a black girl would not necessarily, I might not be hip to the type of music he's talking about. Little did he yeah. know I was super fucking hip. <laughs> and so like like and, <laughs> and so like that that moment of being like oh my god you you know i i love those moments but it never occurred to me to be like oh oh but you know what else too like back in my day when i was single you couldn't really you know suss that was, out ahead of time yeah you yeah, yeah you know there was like there may have been myspace and i'm sure there was myspace was there myspace in 1997 98 no Right? No. Like, you know, like yeah, there no. was no, yeah, you couldn't really get like the drop on people like you can now, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, it was a real nice little in for me that I was appreciative <laughs> of. And, you know, I, I, it's the kind of thing that like, I don't really, there were, there was a time where I was sort of like, it, like almost embarrassed of having done it. And then nah. I stopped and was like, I tried to like meet him on something that he was interested in yeah yeah. which is actually like just putting an effort to connect with somebody which is fine yeah the only thing that i did that i don't love is that i tried to pretend it was a complete coincidence (laughs) instead i could have just said i saw that you liked murakami and i checked him out and i'm in the middle of such and such book and right 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 more straight about where it was coming from (laughs) Um, it, so she was reading Kafka on the Shore, a 2002 novel by Japanese author Haruki Murakami. Uh, it was a 2005 English translation was among the 10 best books of 2005 from the New York Times and received wow. the World Fantasy Award. The book tells the stories 
of young Kafka Tamura, a bookish 15 year old boy who runs away from his Oedipal curse and uh, Satoru Nakata, an old disabled man with the uncanny ability to talk to cats. The book incorporates themes of music as a communicative conduit, metaphysics, dreams, fate, and the subconscious. Ooh, I'm into it. Yeah, I might go check it out myself. Yeah, I and I, I guess you know. I mean, I don't, I don't know really the book enough to make any sort of assertions, but I'm wondering if that is supposed to like tell us a little bit something about about Jade, maybe indicate some depth or something there. I'm not really sure. Yeah. But um but yeah, he just shows up at the door and just gives her this hug that it's very much just like Ah, oh, you feel like home. You know that yeah, kind of thing? It's a relief for sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's I, I was sort of wondering actually as he hugs her, like if it was going to get emotional. You know, if he was going to sort of because he like was looking forward to this guy's night Mm -hmm. and it's just clearly not turned into what he wanted. So I sort of wondered if he was going to be a little bit bummed about it. We don't know. I mean, he, he gives her this, that mean all it ends with just them hugging in a hallway. It's a nice long hug too, you know? Yeah. Um, And then it cuts, it leaves them there. We don't really see what the rest of, we don't know how much he tells her, which I guess is a good question. Like, uh, do you think he, he tells her what Rupert tried to pull? I don't think so because he wants her to like Rupert. I don't think he tells her. I think if another thing happens, he may eventually, but I feel like he's weirdly defensive and he Hmm. knows she would not think much of this. So you think he's still in the, still kind of in the position of wanting to protect Rupert yeah. Uh, or maybe maybe not protect Rupert is not the right word. I'm sorry, but doesn't want to be honest with Jade about the piece of shit that Rupert might be turning out to be. We already mm-hmm. know he's a piece of shit, but Nate is learning in a real way what a piece of shit he actually is, yeah. and maybe is not ready to face the harsh truth of that. Um, yeah. So you so you think he's he probably he, you think he doesn't share with her exactly what went down tonight. Yeah, I feel like it's um the way that he reacted with like you know her being like, oh he what is it she says he seems nice like, yeah he seems nice like, and him saying like well he's a really decent guy. I feel like that was him knowing the way that she said that wasn't really good, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, and trying to be like, I get he's not. Uh, 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 see somebody who you just have to get to know is sort of the energy when you say oh he's a really decent guy there's a, a sort of a, a tone to that that always sounds like yeah. to me it's not apparent right away yeah but deep yeah. down you yeah. know he's good and he and he kind of stumbles through that delivery too mm-hmm like, in my opinion, when he's telling her, oh, well, yeah, he's because he tries to say nice and then he changes it to decent and it doesn't feel. I don't know, it it doesn't feel like it's delivered in a way that is uh, convincing. Yeah. You know, like. Mm-hmm. He wants it to be convincing He because he really wants to believe it, but he sounds like a little shaky. Yeah. You know, but uh, so, okay. All right. And so then the last thing we get to is Isaac showing up at Colin's home and finally ready to like have this conversation that he has been, you know, avoiding (laughs) every time Colin tries to talk to him Isaac has not been here for it and he shows up and he just finally admits it like you lied to me Mm -hmm. and then the the real pain that Isaac is feeling is he says what is it about me that you that made you lie like Isaac has taken it like what did I do to make you think that I wouldn't understand or that I would be an asshole or whatever, you know, like Mm -hmm. Isaac is, is Isaac has internalized Colin keeping the secret as it being 
a reflection of who Isaac is. Mm-hmm. And and that is why he's so hurt because he thinks it means that Colin thinks, I don't know, doesn't think very highly of him. Yeah. You know? Yep. I really liked this. There's a another show and I'm still hoping eventually you'll get around to watching it. So I'm not going to name it, but <laughs> there is a, a scene where um, this couple finds out that their son is gay from a third party because that person thinks they already know. Mm. And those people, the parents eventually like come to them and they're like, we're really trying to understand, you know, like how could this happen what did we do wrong and they assume they're saying how did we make our son be gay how were we bad parents and Mm -hmm. eventually they say how did we like make him feel so concerned that he never told us Mm. what like they're they're really upset that their own child felt the need to hide it and they're like I, we didn't want him to feel this way about us. Like we would, we want him to share and we feel really bad that he wasn't at all ready to tell us. And he's how old and you guys have known for how long, like it was a really nice moment of thinking, you know, where they're going with it. And then it turns out that they're genuinely like, we had to have done wrong mm-hmm. somewhere mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. them to feel this way, you know? um so yeah similar similar vibes yeah and uh and we get colin just sort of explaining like Mm -hmm. it's not about you dude and he and he says something he says he tells isaac look i was 99 percent sure that you would support me but that one percent scared the shit out of me and i thought that that was also really really good to include right because you know again fear you know, makes us do all kinds of things, <laughs> convinces us mm-hmm. of all kinds of things. And, and, um, <laughs> fucking Isaac says, how did you keep it a secret? <laughs> and he says, you know, I can't keep a secret. And Colin says, okay, yeah, that was also the other reason I didn't tell you. <laughs> yeah. He's like, you knew. And literally I lasted one day by the time you knew it was all over. And I was like, that's a really good point. Actually. I didn't think about it that way. <laughs> um, is and top or bottom sex or sleeping arrangements? I, sexual position. Is... Unless bunk beds are involved, then it's both. This is Would so you ever cute. shag a woman? No. I'm gay. I know, but what if you had to? 1967 Raquel Welch. Welch. And Isaac is like a choice. (laughs) And then um, Isaac asks him, who's the fittest guy on the team? And Colin says, I'm not going to tell you and you would never believe it or you would never guess it. Mm -hmm. And Isaac says, bumper catch. And Colin is like, yeah. I love that he's so startled by that. <laughs> he he stops and thinks about it for a second it just kind of goes over and i'm like i want to i, I want to know more about this like i'm same sorry, i'm not seeing who the fuck is more fit than sam i don't uh, see it i don't <laughs> see it but i mean if you say so i loved I just, it <clears throat> just for I science just, i would like confirmation of this i would so. i would w- i like how do we get there mm-hmm. you know i want to know how did isaac get there and then, like, how did Colin get here? <laughs> but, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> and um, I, uh, Colin says, I love you. Boy. And he calls him Boyo. And he always has. I just think that's really cute. I think that's just like a fucking UK or, or Colin is Welsh, I think. Yeah, because he's always talking about it, Welsh independence. <laughs> but uh, oh, I forgot about that. Bit. Yeah. yeah, but he, he says, you uh, skipped over Isaac asking about the obligatory. What about the locker room situation? Oh my god, that's right. That's right. Yeah, because that yeah. is like always a thing that comes up. It is always a thing that comes up, and I did skip mm-hmm. over that because that was not my favorite. But I guess it has to be addressed. I don't really feel like it has to be addressed, but whatever. And Colin, I just feel says he like. Has to- keep his head down and thinks about global warming (laughs) yeah i feel like it was addressed more in because usually what it is is just like oh you're not going to get freaky with us in the in the shower but what it felt like was much more like colin 
has there is no hint whatsoever that he was attracted to or struggling with being around naked men and Isaac genuinely being like, how do you do that? If I was in a shower with girls, there is just no way, my friend, it would just be very, very obvious. Like, and I just sort of appreciate that mention of the, the just, there is a certain amount of, self-control that men just assume they don't have and they've never been challenged to have it yeah that's actually straight, fun, like yeah. there's been no particular effort put into it because they've always been told well it's not your fault you can't help right it. right and for it to just be pointed out like oh look here's a dude surrounded by like young hot men like the hot they're professional athletes mm -hmm. like come on and he's just gets through it and it's fine yeah, so that's maybe, actually, uh, yeah. I that's actually a good way to some control of myself. That's a really, really interesting and good way to look at that. Because uh, I really didn't like that, but I mm -hmm. like the, the spin you put on it. Because Isaac says to him in response, if I had to take a shower with a bunch of girls, I'd definitely have a boner. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like Isaac is admitting that he wouldn't have the kind of self-control that Colin has to have. Mm -hmm. uh, so that really does lead right into your point there. I like that. All right. All right. You turn me around on that. Hey, <laughs> you know, I love hearing that anytime. Somebody <laughs> says, I didn't think of it like that, but you're right. I'm always just like, that's my dessert. Thank you. <laughs> but yeah, like you said, I love you, boyo. And there's a long pause and Isaac looks real weird. And Colin just says, you can't say it, can you? And he says, <laughs> no, but. But you know I do, yeah. Oh, and yeah. it's just cute. There's just a little. It's they're so playing cute. some game. They're, like, they're playing like soccer. They're playing like whatever the soccer game is. Are they playing you know? FIFA? Oh my god! I didn't even know that. <laughs> guys. And rest yeah, that's for a minute. And yeah, and that's how it ends with just them on the you know on the couch playing, having like a conversation about real shit, uh, and just being like dudes who love each other and uh yeah yeah oh my god the billionaire is back next episode oh did you watch a little thingy did it no, autoplay or screen it didn't autoplay it's just the thumbnail came up oh all right yeah and he's well, the thumbnail well well he's well, a, well 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 <laughs> same dude is uh the lead in after party that i was trying to get you to watch oh is he Oh, you mm -hmm. should have told me that. Did you tell me that? Because I absolutely I feel love like him. I did tell you. I don't remember. All right, he um was in a show that only had one season called Champagne Illinois or Champagne Ill, uh, with Adam Pauly, I think his name is, and he was so good in that that I will just watch him. Like he's he's in, right now he's in a series of commercials that are running on like Facebook. I don't even, I forget what it's even oh, advertising. Weird. Okay. Yeah, it's like a, I don't even know what he's selling. But I just think he is in, I will just watch him in anything now. So now I will watch After Party <laughs> because I just I love really him. really good. Um, there's a, a second season. I've only been commissioned to watch the first one. So once you finish the first one, I want to talk about it. But if you watch the second season, don't say anything to me because okay. I, I don't know when <laughs> it, or if I'm going to get to watch it. All um, right. But highly recommend it, and everybody, I'm covering it for Spoil Me, so if you want to hear coverage of it, you can go ahead and uh, and find that on the Spoil Me feed, and it has been a really good time. It's a it's a murder mm -hmm. mystery, which is, like, so very much my jam. Um, all right, guys. Well, I'm not going to say hi to new patrons this week, because we are so over time. It's yeah, a, we probably like the fucking... longest of the episodes so far. And... Uh... They're going to get even longer as the season goes wraps up. So I don't know. Yeah. These these two hour crowd casts are just not long enough for us to cover shows that are this long, quite frankly. Yeah. Uh, we do normally crowd cast for what were we doing it for? Books mostly, right? Like the live crowd cast mm -hmm. now, we do Unsober and we were doing Ray Bear and. Yeah, before this. Yeah, I don't the think. The other we, one we did. Yeah. And so, yeah, this, this two hours, mm-mm. <laughs> yeah. 
Once we uh, transition to the <clears throat> new Crowdcast, it won't cut us off at two hours anymore. But uh, we're still in the old one. So Yeah. Yeah, because what were we doing where we had more than two hours one time? Yeah, any of the it, new ones, it'll keep going. So I think so that was, was that? an unsober or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was an unsober. It kept kept going. Yeah. All right, Speaking kids. Which, tomorrow we have our unsober about the unspoiled commune, guys, and we're going to oh, talk about right. our perfect ideal place to live and what we would have everything be. And there have been some comments from people making suggestions that are compelling. Did you see so. the floor pan by your astrological sign that I posted in the group? I tagged oh, you shit. in it. I got it. Yeah. Thank you for reminding me of that. I got to like put that on save somewhere and pull it up when we start talking about it. Cause uh, I definitely want to talk be- about those. I can't believe how perfect my room was. <laughs> there was like, because I identify so strongly with my moon sign. Uh, I have to. I would have to combine the floor plan. Yes, I do yeah. like this. Has the, the coin toss corner, though, because we're so indecisive. <laughs> that was a good touch. I um, like that. That mine had a tiny little sliver room that just said "martyr." <laughs> oh my god! I didn't see that. Oh my god! Called Brutal. out. Called Brutal. out. <laughs> Uh, all right guys we love you all so much hope y'all are enjoying the coverage if you want to support the show go to patreon.com slash unspoiled and get access to so much content on there and i hope that y'all have just been having as much fun as we are until next time toodaloo motherfuckers bye guys fuck the police (laughs) no my hands won't be tied down I can finally see the truth So simple but so clear Accepting the notion's death Spoiled Network Podcast.